Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Denver Bears franchise here in season number six. Now, we are now in the month of April, heading into the month of May, and you know, this season was all about getting back to the postseason. It's, that's what it's all going to be about. And, you know, one guy I really want to highlight here to start out this episode, along with the rest of the young guys, is Will Benson. He started out this season pretty hot. He was working with Charlie Blackman in the offseason and has adopted his batting stance. So we will just take a look at some of our young guys in this episode. I want to switch it up this season, give us a different look as we evaluate players individually this season. So here is Will Benson at the plate versus the Mets, and he just absolutely gets robbed by Francisco Lindor. What a great play, robbing him of a hit. Now, Will Benson is a guy that has not hit for high average, and to be honest, I've had to actually sit him because he's so good defensively, but his bat does really hurt the lineup. I'm hoping that this year that could change. You know, we traded him for Trevor Story, traded Trevor Story for him, I should say, say in season number one. And Will Benson is a guy that has been very good defensively. He has had a whole lot of outfield assists, but that's the thing. It's like you can't bat him consistently because he is just probably going to let you down or go on a cold streak eventually. And that's what happened in the playoffs. You know, I definitely wanted to play him more, but the thing is I needed my best bat forward. Even though I was sacrificing defense, Will Benson, I'm hoping can turn it around this year and really be a reliable bat. And hopefully changing his batting stance over to Charlie Blackman's will help him, but we'll see. Here's one of the tough teams in the NL, the Phillies. They are very, very good. We beat them in the NLDS last season. And then we faced the Nationals in the wild card game a year ago before that. And you know, I think that we're just going to have to be very good offensively this year because a team like Philly, they beat us down in this game 8-2. to two. They're not going to pull any punches. Like, they are going to give us everything they have. Now, moving on to the next young guy I want to evaluate here in this video is Mohamed Willingham. He's hitting 243. Now, I have had, you know, some hesitancies about batting him versus both handedness. Now, he is excellent at hitting versus left. But versus right, that's where he kind of struggles, and that's where his average comes down. A lot of you guys have said that, you know, you can play him every day. He does have good enough attributes to play every day, but it doesn't show with production. I have no idea why. When I drafted Mohamed Willingham, I thought he was going to be, like, the next big thing. But he has been kind of far from that. He has flashed his potential, but he has definitely not been that. We drafted him number eight overall in season number two. And I thought that he was going to be, like I said, the next big thing. He still could be, but he definitely needs to come around for sure. I would say right now he just needs to be more consistent. Everything else is good as he hits one to left field on that one. And now he has an opportunity to drive a run in here in a tie ball game in the top of the seventh. He faces the Giants' number one pick. This is Duane, Duane Killian in season number one. But he just flies out to first base. The Giants go on to win this one at home. And we do lose at 4-2 to two here. But we do continue to win this season as these are just games that we're just focusing on certain players. But we're still winning here at 17-10. and 10. So let's see if Willingham can have a better game this time versus the Arizona Diamondbacks as we face Levi Kelly on the mound. He hits one hard to left field. That one will get down and left. And, you know, one thing I love about Will Willingham is that when he does make contact, he does hit the ball pretty hard. And you will see a lot of times in the playoffs, he hits the ball hard. And it ends up being maybe right at somebody, but maybe an error ensues because of how hard it's hit. We do need to get better with him at just being consistent versus right-handed pitching. That's really going to help him. If he can do that, I think we got have like a very dangerous middle of the lineup bat. Here is Willingham, one for three to the plate, now facing Darwinson Hernandez. He hits one to second base, though, and this is just an easy ground ball and the Arizona Diamondbacks have been building throughout this series as well they have not quite hit their stride yet but they are just trying to break through they have not been able to get over the Padres that's the one thing it's like hey you need to get over the Padres okay that's good now get over the Dodgers and now the Bears I mean that is the struggle here in this division and probably the reason why the San Francisco Giants will probably never compete for the title in the West 
So let's move over to the pitching side of things and check out Ramel Koffer. And I have to admit, Ramel Koffer's probably my favorite young guy on the team. You know, we acquired him via trade uh, from Seattle in season number, I believe it was two. And he has been with us ever since. And we acquired him after, you know, he had a season where he, I believe, was 0-11 to start the season out with the Mariners. And we traded for him. He had a very high whip, a very high ERA. Nobody really, you know, gave him a chance. But I wanted to just kind of develop him, and it's paid off big time. As you can just see right here facing the Cardinals, he has that two-seam fastball and a screwball, which is deadly. He also has a curveball. He has a changeup, but I don't use it too often. As here's a ground ball to first base. Winker turns the double play as he moves over to first base this year for one of his secondary positions. Victor Reyes is the leadoff, in the leadoff spot for the Cardinals this season, and he grounds out into a double play in the third inning, so two straight innings to end with double plays. Danny Hernan Henderson, oh, I say Hernandez, Henderson up to the plate. He hits one deep to left field, though, in the fourth inning. That one is gone. Ramel Koffer, like I said, he doesn't really give up too many runs, but Sometimes he does miss his spot just like that when Henderson just absolutely tattoos that one. It's 1-0. One On to the sixth inning, though. Koffer still pitching a great game, but no run support. Here's a throw to first base, and that is a good stretch by Jesse Winker at first, bringing up two outs. And this one will be deep off of the right field wall, and that one stays in the yard. But Benson with that excellent arm, he gets it in quickly. It's just a stand-up double is now that brings up the middle of their lineup. Here is Nolan Arenado at the plate. He watches that one, bringing it to a 2-2 count here. And let's see what happens. Curve ball, and he just hits this one to center field. And that's what Coffer's good at, man. Just getting out of innings like this one, as that is going to be Brian Reynolds playing in center. He camps under that one. We do come back and get the win in this game. Coffer gets awarded with the win as well. He pitches six innings, strikes out five batters, gives up three hits, walks two, one earned run. We win this one four to one. As you can just see, Brian Reynolds went two for four from the plate as well. Now, the next young guy I want to evaluate here is Zach Veen. You know, I really like Zach Veen a lot. The issue is we've been so deep at outfield that it's kind of hard to find a spot for all of these outfielders. As we signed Brian Reynolds in the offseason, we have uh, Benson in right field. We also have Veen, and then we have Winker playing in left. Mo Willingham can play in left at some days as well. And then we have Benito Ozuna. I mean, we have so many outfielders. It's easier to get a spot in the infield. We have Suarez who plays third base, but he's older. He needs some days off. And then second base, we just signed Arias. And then first base, pretty much, it's kind of a revolving door. Mohamed Willingham and Winker have been platooning there for now. But I've been batting Mohamed Willingham at first base versus right-handers also when I can. So here is Veen. You know, he has a good arm in the outfield. He has a good bat. He can really hit the ball hard. That's one thing I admire about him is that, you know, when he does make contact, he's going to hit the ball hard, and it won't always be a home run. But he's going to be a very good hitter in the future. I like what I have out of him. But let's talk, talk about maybe the best guy on our team right now. I'm talking all around. It may be C.J. Abrams. He led our team in average with 296 last year, 379 on base percentage. Hit two, hitting 261 this year, and I have moved him up. Remember, I had him in the A spot the last two years. Now I move him up to the leadoff spot. I think he's just a better leadoff hitter than Benito Ozuna because of his ability to score runs. He hits triples. That is his calling card. He led the MLB in triples last year, and he hit 299 in the month of April, 227 in the month of May, kind of splitting here. And I do want to get him some days off, but he is a young guy, so he can play a lot of days is let's see what he can do. He has a very good bat. Now, this season alone, he already has four games with leadoff home runs, so he is doing very, very well for us. Here is Abrams up for his second at bat. He hits us on the left field. That one will be camped under by Byron Buxton, who, had, who signed a big deal with the Mets as well. So we move on to the fifth inning. C.J. Abrams is 0 for 2. In this game, he hits one hard to the left side. That one gets past Lindor. It will score one. Abrams easily gets to second here with 90 speed, and he will have an RBI double. And Abrams really can 
fly on the base pass with that 90 speed. Luis Arias comes to the plate now. He hits one to left center. That one gets down, and that's why you bring Arias in. And Abrams is going to be a guy that's going to score a ton of runs because he gets on base at a high clip. Then you have Arias. You have uh, guys like Winker, Mohamed Willingham, and also Suarez hitting behind him. So he's going to score a lot of runs. And I don't even want to say anything about his defense. It is elite. He is so good defensively. I am excited for his future. We win this game 4-2 to two, as the Bears just keep winning here to start season number six. A guy that I really, really want to exceed at the highest level is Trez Jenkins. You know, I felt bad for him because he was our minor leaguer of the year in season number one. But then when we started to move him up, he definitely started to struggle. You can see right now he's at a 2.89 ERA in 22 games. That is his career high. But the reason why that's his career high is because we just haven't trusted to have him at the MLB level in other years. You see last year, 176 whip, 180 before that, 130, which isn't bad before that, but it was only in like five innings pitched. But we just haven't been able to trust him because every time we move him up, he struggled. So let's see what he does versus Pittsburgh. He's having a good start to the year this year. He's in his mid-20s, 25 years old. He does get the ground out right there. Daryl McGee up to the plate now in the bottom of the seventh inning with one out. He just hits a tapper in front of the plate, and it will be an out. Marshawn throws on to first base. Two outs here. Tresh Jenkins is a very, I would say right now, he is a work in progress. I, I think that he still has some improving to do. I think his main issue, at least it might not be an issue this year, but it used to be, was his command. He did not really have control of his pitches, but it seems like it's improving quite a bit, and I really like what he's doing so far. The next guy I want to look at here is DeAnthony Pierre, a guy that has been in our minor league system since the beginning of this series, now in season six. It's been six seasons for him to get up to the major league level. He finally is there here, and quite honestly, I like him as a relief pitcher because, hey, if a starting pitcher gets hurt, he's going to go into that role. He is next in line to be a starter. Here's a ground ball to short. Easy double play. One thing I love about having C.J. Abrams and Arias is that their defense is elite together. They don't miss many double plays. And here is D.J. Hammer coming up to the spot plate now with two outs. And it will just be a liner to, to right field. Zach Veen is under that one. And we get the win. And I love the young guys, man. I love what we have built. We have drafted well. We have a few of our draft picks that are now at the MLB level. And it feels good. It feels good to draft well and have this depth. We have signed a couple of free agents which have helped us, like Jesse Winker, like Eugenio Suarez. And I think that we just have a good mix of everybody. Now, just looking at the month of May, you can just see how good we're doing. We have some big wins. We have some close wins. But here's the thing. We're not giving up many runs at all. Our pitching right now is elite. This was the mo That game right there, the 13-1 loss, was the most runs we've given up by far. But we have a lot of wins in the month of May. And we did not get swept at all. We avoided a sweep in every single series and pretty much won every single series in that month. So we are off to a 36-18 and 18 record. The Dodgers are only two and a half games back. They are off to a good start as well. But I think we can stay on top of them as long as we keep up this pitching and getting on base. How about Brian Reynolds coming in in free agency? He has a 399 on base percentage. He leads us. We are seventh in the MLB in on base percentage. But here is where we shine. Second in ERA in the MLB. But how about the top three teams? The World Series champs at number three, the Cubs, and then the Phillies who went to the NL. CS as well and here we are on top of the NL West and I am looking forward to seeing what we can do here in this season I want to get through the regular season pretty quickly and this is the reason why I want to do these episodes I want to keep this series fresh I don't want it to be boring and just like other seasons so we will focus next episode on the draft and the older veterans on our team and talk about their contracts coming up a lot of them have expiring contracts so you don't want to miss that one hit subscribe hit that like button stay tuned let's get it let's go